What's up guys, it's Nicole, also known as Nikki Vegan, and today I'm gonna show you some ways to refresh your life. I've got a recipe that's really refreshing, really wholesome, and it's gonna kinda shake things up. It's got tons of flavor. I know this time of year after the holidays we wanna eat healthy, but you don't wanna eat boring, so this is perfect for that. I've also got some organization hacks that are just gonna make you feel more productive, more organized, and more efficient. I've got a sleep hack, which is huge for me because one of my New Year's resolutions is to focus on getting consistent sleep, I hate sleeping, I know, I'm an anomaly. Comment below, Are you? do you love sleep? Do you hate sleep? I hate sleeping. So this one's been really, really good for me. And finally, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite podcasts and specific episodes that I think are really gonna help stimulate your mind, refresh your mind, and make you feel really productive and inspired to carry on through the new year. So I hope you guys are excited and let's get started. One of my favorite ways to refresh is to nourish my body with wholesome food that is really, really packed with flavor. And this might be one of my favorite soups I've ever made. It's very simple to make and the basis of it is going to be some carrots. You need roughly two cups of chopped carrots, which I found is usually about five small to medium carrots. You're also gonna chop some onion and you can chop both the onion and the carrots really roughly because this is going to be blended so they don't have to be perfect and you don't have to chop anything for a super long time. Just throw them into the pan along with some crushed garlic cloves and some really thinly sliced ginger and this is going to add so much flavor. Ginger and carrot together is a match made in heaven. And then I just saute this with a little bit of water for about five to 10 minutes until it's really soft and starts to be really fragrant as well. I'm gonna add some flavor with some sea salt and ground coriander. Again, coriander, onions, garlic, ginger, carrots, all work so well. And then I'm just gonna do a good pinch of black pepper. You don't need too much because you are gonna get a little bit of spice from the ginger. And then I just cover this and let it simmer until all the veggies are soft for just a few more minutes. Then I like to take the heat down all the way to zero and add some coconut milk. I like to use the carton variety rather than the canned variety for this just because it's a little bit lighter. And this one from So Delicious is great because it's unsweetened and it's organic. So if you can find it, I highly recommend it. Add one cup into the pot. I love that everything just goes straight into the pot for this recipe, super easy. And we're also going to add one cup of vegetable broth. And again, this one from Pacific I really like. It's organic and it's low sodium and I think it has a nice flavor. So if you can find it, I feel like it's pretty widely available. Go ahead and get that one. And then we're going to deepen up the flavor a bit with a teaspoon of tamari. I'm going to add a little bit of zing with some apple cider vinegar and then kind of balance everything out with a bit of maple syrup. Then we're going to make it really nice and creamy by adding a quarter of a cup of almond butter, which sounds kind of like a random thing to do, but I'm telling you it makes this so creamy and gives it the most delicious flavor. So I'm going to blend that up and what you get is this incredibly creamy, really, really wholesome nourishing soup I feel like the flavors here just really jump out at you and make you feel really bright and refreshed I like to top this with a little bit of cilantro and just a few red pepper flakes and I think it looks really pretty it feels really good and nourishing when you eat it and oh, it's just it's like decadent even though it was so easy I love it while I was in the kitchen, I decided to clean my coffee pot, like deep clean my coffee pot. I was watching a YouTube video from Brittany Vassar's channel and she said that if you make coffee often and you find that it starts to taste different over time, that may be because of mineral deposits that actually build up inside the coffee pot. So what you can do is you can kind of give it a vinegar and water rinse and that will help break up some of the minerals and make your coffee taste so much better. So as soon as I heard that, I definitely wanted to try it and this is how I did it. So this is my little coffee station. If you watched my kitchen tour, I'll put that in the description box below. But as you can see, it gets a little bit dirty from time to time. And you'd be surprised how quickly this happens because I clean my coffee pot pretty frequently. But over time, like I said, those mineral deposits, especially on the inside, really do start to add up. And so what I decided to do was just to kind of take off all of the pieces that you can remove, like where the filter is and everything. And I washed those with soap and water. And for the inside, I went ahead and I filled up a coffee cup with half vinegar and half water. You're supposed to use distilled vinegar and that would work really well. I only had apple cider vinegar so that's what I used but again half and half is the ratio you want and if you have a larger coffee pot that makes several cups like the regular 12 cup one you're just going to do this in the same ratio 50% 
vinegar and 50% water and pour that through. But mine just makes one cup at a time, so that's why I used a cup. And then I just let this run, and the vinegar is going to come out along with some of the debris. You're going to be able to look at the bottom and see that there's some coffee grounds and some other sediments. So you want to dump this water and then fill the cup back up with water and run it through the coffee pot a few more times to make sure that all the vinegar is gone and also that a lot of those mineral deposits are washed away. And then what I do is I just take a hot cloth and I wipe everything down, especially the inside, and it really did make a difference. First of all, it looked 100 times better, which I think is really nice, but also it did really make a nice cup of coffee after that. It just felt really fresh and clean. By the way, I noticed while I was doing this that my toaster could use a little wipe down, so I went ahead and did that as well. Much better, right? The last thing, and I think the most rewarding thing that I did in the kitchen was I finally tackled my refrigerator door. If you've seen my kitchen tour, you'll know that I actually try to keep like a really tidy, cozy kitchen, but this is the one part of my kitchen that really gets messy. Comment below if you can relate. But basically, it's just a ton of sauces, and after the holidays, I had so many random bags of nuts and dried fruit that I was using for recipes, and it was just getting really messy. And as you can see, it's not very functional. Nothing was really closed properly. It was spilled out everywhere and making a mess and on top of it it was kind of making me feel bad every time I opened the refrigerator door and saw how much unnecessary plastic I was using and so what I decided to do was take everything out I was gonna wipe everything down and then transfer everything to glass jars I got these jars from my local grocery store but you can find them at places like Ikea and Target and Marshall's clean them out really well and then go ahead and fill them up with your nuts seeds chia seeds, whatever you have. I filled up the jars earlier in the afternoon and then that evening I finished this job by just kind of taking everything out and wiping down the actual shelves which felt really nice. It felt really good to put the jars back on nice freshly washed shelves. And the reason I point out that I actually split this job up into two parts, actually it was three parts because I got the jars, I washed the jars and then the next day I filled them up and then this evening is when I put everything back. And the reason I tell you that is because sometimes when you have a job like this that you know is going to take like 45 minutes or something. Thing, you'll put it off because you don't have the time to do it from start to finish right in that moment and you don't have the time tomorrow or in the foreseeable future and it just keeps getting procrastinated and procrastinated and procrastinated and that's what happened to me and what I realized is that okay if I have 15 minutes here or 20 minutes here I can go ahead and finish the job that way and it just makes it where you're actually getting things done and you're feeling really efficient and as you can see I now have a beautiful refrigerator that is super organized I wiped off all of the bottles I put them down at the bottom because these are the things I use the least and I use a little cup to corral smaller things like curry paste and also the little tubes of tomato paste that I use if I didn't do that they would fall behind the other bottles and things would fall over and it would be a disaster again so that's a little tip I have for you and then I also like to put the things I use the most up at the top so I put things like the raisins and the flax seeds that I use for my oatmeal in the morning up at the top and this just looks so beautiful and so much fresher okay so as I said in the intro I really don't like sleeping and I think one of the reasons I don't love sleeping besides the fact that I always feel just bummed out ever since I was a kid I just feel like by the time it's time to go to bed I'm like man like there's a million shows I still want to watch there's a million things I want to do it's the last thing I want to do is go to sleep so I always dread it but I think especially if you have kind of a bed that's sort of meh then it's going to make it even worse before I had an Ikea mattress that was really really hard and it was too small for the bed because I got the mattress first and then I got the bed and every time I crawled into bed there was this big gap where I could see the bottom of the bed and I figured eh, one of these days I'll fix it but as soon as I got a low mattress which I saw on Instagram and it comes in this box and it shipped to your house and it unrolls and when you first see it you're like there's no way that this is going to first of all be big enough to fit my bed and also that it's going to be comfortable like it's rolled up into a tiny little you know and it just doesn't seem like it's going to actually be a nice mattress but you unroll it and as soon as I jumped on it initially I knew that it was going to be different and now I'm so frustrated with myself that I didn't just do this sooner I've been kind of sleeping on a not very comfortable mattress for literally years and now that I know how easy it was to do this I'm like I wish I would have done it sooner 
I never really thought that I would order a mattress online without trying it, but honestly this process was so easy and I would recommend it to anyone. You just go onto Lul's website and you pick what size you need and I ended up getting a queen and then they send the box to your house and they email you some tips on how you can responsibly recycle your old mattress, which I thought was a really nice touch. And then you just unroll it and it's going to automatically puff up, but it fully inflates after 24 hours. But even just immediately, I could tell this was way better, way more comfortable and just a bit more luxurious than my old mattress and now that I've been sleeping on it for a few nights I I freaking love it you guys you are going to absolutely love this mattress if you need a new one I actually teamed up with lol after trying it to get you guys a discount for $150 off so check out the description box there's a few podcasts that I really, really love, and I usually have one on while I'm doing some of these tasks. So if I'm cleaning out the coffee pot, I usually have a podcast on. When I'm doing my makeup in the morning, I have a podcast on. The first one that I love to listen to, and I usually listen to on my lunch break at work, is the Delicious Liella podcast. I feel like it's a really positive and uplifting podcast. The episodes are usually pretty short and sweet. And some of the ones that I really liked, one of them was about food waste, which was very eye-opening and very inspirational. And another one that I really liked was about veganism and how it affects the environment but all of the episodes are really good and I really love when Ella talks about food because she talks about cooking she thinks of cooking kind of the way that I do so she'll be like oh it's so easy you're just gonna saute up some onions and add some garlic and do a splash of tamari and I always am sitting there like huh I want a pen like what did you say and she almost thinks of ingredients kind of like puzzle pieces and she's like yeah you're gonna add this and this and this and then voila 10 minutes later you have this brilliant thing and I just love that so it's a really great podcast to listen to Another one that I really enjoyed recently and very specifically this one episode is the Skinny Confidentials interview with Ed Millet or Milet. He's a motivational speaker and there were so many times where I was listening to this podcast interview and I was literally talking back to the phone and I was like, yes, exactly, because he was saying a lot of things that I just really clicked for me and some of them were about relationships but later on in the episode he talks about money and something that really stuck with me from that interview was he said you know if you're not making very much money and you think that one day when you make more money you're going to all of a sudden have better money managing skills it's not that's not the case and that you need to be practicing responsible money management now with the money that you have and not hoping that one day more money is going to make it better because what inevitably happens is you have more expenses more responsibility and you know unless you have help managing your money you're st you're not going to have good practices in place to take care of that extra money that comes in so he really encourages people to be smart about the money that they have now save be responsible um, and that was something that I was like whoa and finally I have two I think these are my favorite recommendations this is from my favorite podcast which is the super soul conversations with Oprah and the first one that I really liked is with Stephen Pressfield it's called unlock your creative genius Stephen Pressfield is the author of the war on art and it's a really great episode about creativity and how even sometimes when you're doing something that you want to be doing we feel this natural resistance and some of the time that makes you give up or that makes you hate yourself in a way because you're like why can't I just stop procrastinating and get this done. I know I'm going to feel so much better when it's done. And he really goes into that and how that's a natural part of the creative process and how you can work with that versus resisting that. And I just thought it was a really interesting take on creativity. And my favorite one is called A New Earth, Awakening Your Life's Purpose. And it's with Eckhart Tolle, but it's unlike any other Eckhart Tolle interview that I've ever listened to. First of all, it was really, really candid. And I loved how conversational it was with Oprah, who is also someone who is really into meditating and stillness. One thing I've noticed from a lot of the successful people that I admire, like Oprah, is that they accredit a lot of their success to stillness and mindfulness. And that's hard for me because I'm always like, gotta go, 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 gotta, you know, produce, 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 gotta be busy, gotta be productive. Otherwise, I'm falling behind. And a lot of the times people say, yes, that's good. You have to have work ethic, you have to have drive, but you have to have moments of stillness so that you can create space between the reactions. If you're always reacting to everything, you're not, you don't have pauses in between where you can think of more creative ideas or new approaches and you end up just doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. There were a couple of really good kind of nuggets of awesome that I had to write down so I actually wrote them down on my calendar that I keep on my refrigerator so I could look at it every day and one of the ones that stood out was you don't become good by trying to be good you become good by finding the goodness in you and letting that out and then he goes on to say that the way that you 
find the goodness in you and let it come out is through stillness and through mindfulness because only then can you really access your subconscious and give it you know kind of tunnels to go out into the world so so that is it for this video I hope that you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and comment below and let me know what hack you're gonna try first so are you gonna be making soup first are you gonna be cleaning out your refrigerator door are you gonna be listening to some podcasts let me know in the comments and make sure you check out the description box because I'm gonna have lots of information there the lol coupon is gonna be there the uh, podcast all written out and a lot of other information like my social media handles and all that will be there as well so check that out and I will see you guys in a video very soon. Bye!